Over the weekend, we got our first taste of TBC Classic Esports during the Gold Invitational. It was our first look at how arenas might shape up for Season 1 of TBC as some of the best players in the world brawled it out schoolyard style on the beta. And in some Shadowlands news, we got to see some huge changes to the PTR, including some new PvP talents and legendaries with the potential removal of elite weapons for next season. And finally, we saw a data mined PvP trinket that had everyone freaking out, so still Stick around to see the buzz for 9.1. In this week's roundup, we will be breaking down the most important PvP news for TBC and the Shadowlands PTR, and you won't want to miss it. But before we do, we want to know, what questions do you have about TBC? Maybe you're planning on playing, but don't know where to start. Are there some specific questions you want answers to? Maybe you want to know how to get geared or what faction to play. So let us know what you're thinking about in the comments below. And when TBC launches, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow to stay up to date on the new meta. We will be uploading guides for Burning Crusade, so if you're looking to get that sweet gladiator nether drake in season 1, be sure to check out our website. And while that is going on, we will be keeping you in the loop for all important changes in patch 9.1 of Shadowlands. So if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level in classic or retail, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com slash wow. Over the weekend, we saw the first ever TBC Classic Tournament hosted by fan favorite Asmund Gold and featuring some WoW PvP legends. This tournament boasted some of the highest views in recent WoW esports history, eclipsing the view counts for Blizzard's own Arena World Championship. The teams were drafted playground style, with team captains selecting from a list of invited players. Some of the first picks in the draft were BlizzCon champion Chanimal and rogue legend Mir, who if you didn't know by now is one of the best rogues on the TBC beta. Each tournament game was incredibly intense due to the speed of BC Arena, with each game generally lasting under two minutes. The winning team was captained by none other than Hydra, who was one of the first players ever to participate in competitive WoW esports in 2008. His mage lock priest composition beat out some of the tournament favorites and solidified Hydra as one of the best TBC players on the beta. Hydra's post-game interview was definitely memorable, and we have a clip of it here. So, so what is it uh, about Burning Crusade? It can can you put uh, uh, can you put it into words? What is it about Burning Crusade that you're enjoying so much more than Shadowlands Arena? It, it, it's just faster pace. Like everything you do matters way more. Every single yeah. level matters. In Shadowlands, you're like waiting for like 30 seconds for the next go and stuff. Half the time, it's just yeah. And in case you missed the tournament, there is a full VOD saved on Asmund Gold's channel as well as highlights from Hydra's point of view on his personal YouTube. And in case you don't have the beta, be sure to check your emails because Blizzard sent out another wave of invites. Judging by the amount of people logged in, there were a ton of invites sent out. And if you haven't heard the news already, the launch of TBC will come with a few different paid service options. The first is a Dark Portal Pass, which will allow you to instantly boost one character on your Classic account to 58 as early as May 19th. The second is a BC Deluxe Edition, which comes with the Dark Portal Pass and a bunch of goodies. Let's just say that these two payment options have had... Well, mixed reviews from the community. In any case though, be prepared for BC's global release on June 1st. We hope to see you in Outland. Moving on to 9.1 PTR news, there have been a bunch of new changes to PvP talents once again. Absorbing most of Tuesday's PvP talent updates were DKs, who got a few new talent options for all three of their specs. The most important change for PvP was the introduction of Strangulate to Frost and Unholy DKs. Previously, it was exclusive to Blood only, but now is available to the two primary PvP specs. This will make DKs much more valuable in 3v3, as silence effects are incredibly rare in Arena. When paired with a high throughput class like a warrior, DKs might actually be elevated to high tier status with this change alone. Unholy also got some love with a new Necrotic Wounds PvP talent, which replaces Necrotic Strike entirely. This new effect will absorb more healing and will even convert the absorption into a heal on the DK after it ends. Based on our initial testing, it seems like the maximum number of Necrotic stacks possible is 6, meaning DKs can absorb 30% healing on a target while the debuff is active. This might make TSG incredibly strong next patch as the combination of Mortal Strike with Necrotic Wounds will be overwhelming for many healers. There were some other PvP talents added, including one called Doom Burst for Unholy. This will cause your sudden Doom procs to turn your Death Coil into a 90% snare. 
When combined with Harbringer of Doom, this will likely give DKs more uptime on slippery enemy targets if they chose this talent in Arena. Frost also got a new PvP talent called Bitter Chill, which will cause Chains of Ice to reduce the target's haste by 12% and refresh every time Frost Strike is used. This is on top of another new PvP talent called Spell Warden, which will increase the effect of Rune of Spell Warding by 100%. This will randomly proc them a huge shield and reduce casting speed on casters who damage into them while their shield is active. Once again, we have DKs getting talents that slow the game down, literally. This change will likely be impactful against casters and will be especially valuable into mages for denying their mobility and cast times. It seems like DK overall is really being rounded out as the anti-caster class. The 9.1 changes to DKs are giving them even more tools to passively slow the game down against casters. We will have to see if this is enough to elevate them to top tier status, especially considering that wizards are looking really good next patch. And although it might be super Super situational in Arena, DKs also got a new PvP talent called Death's Echo, which gives them an additional charge of Death's Advance, Death and Decay, and most importantly, Death Grip. When combined with the grip of the Everlasting Legendary, DKs will be able to grip you multiple times, so get ready for some scenic tours of your favorite RBGs as you get dragged around the map like a leashed dog. Shaman's got a rework to one of their PvP talent options on Tuesday. Control of Lava will now cause Flame Shock Dispels to erupt with a volcano underneath the Dispeller. Overall, this is a good change for Shaman since Flame Shock Dispels are so punishing. It makes sense that this would be introduced in 9.1 as well since both Rhett and Holy Paladins are getting an AoE Dispel option. Hopefully, this makes the Flame Shock Dispel counterplay much more engaging. Balanced Druids saw another relatively uneventful change to their AoE damage with a minor buff to Stellar Drift. But more importantly, they got a new talent called Starburst, which isn't as exciting as you would think. It causes Starfall to randomly spawn a shining star on the floor. If players move into it, they will get hit for 6k damage and get knocked in the air. But let's be perfectly honest, when are you ever going to use Starfall in Arena and who in their right mind would willingly walk into AoE damage like this? It couldn't be me, of course. Holy Paladins got absolutely massacred with Tuesday's changes as most of their damaging spells got nerfed. This change is entirely PvE focused, with Holy Paladins doing disproportionately high damage on some encounters. Unfortunately, PvE has got a stranglehold on PvP balance once again, with this change being one of the many nerfs to Holy Paladins in 9.1. On the bright side though, Flash of Light healing was buffed by 20%. This means that if you play Holy Paladin, you can spam your most expensive heal to Oom even faster, allowing you to spend less time in Arena overall. Jokes aside, we will keep you up to date on how healer balance turns out once the patch goes live. Warlocks saw some very minor changes Tuesday, as now some of their damage increases will also increase their pets damage. Eradication for Destro, Haunt for Affliction, and From the Shadows for Demonology will now increase pet damage. Overall, this isn't a big change and will only represent a few percentage points in Warlock's overall damage if they even play these talents. And wrapping up our PvP talent changes, Overwatch has been removed for Warriors and replaced with Warbringer, which causes charge to AoE root enemies. Based on conversations with Rank 1 Warriors, this new talent is pretty lackluster and won't be used much in Arena. In general though, it will be much easier to play against Warriors as a caster now that Overwatch is being removed. It's a very frustrating talent to deal with and its removal will help bring Warriors closer in line with other DPS classes. And finally, there were some general changes to PvP item upgrading, weekly vault loot, and arena skirmish rewards. None of these changes are really that exciting and are just a drop in the bucket of all the potential changes Blizzard could make to make PvP gearing more streamlined. So for now, we are once again at the mercy of the development overlords as they search for new ways to keep us on the endless hamster wheel. Some new legendaries were also added on the PTR. Decaying Soul Satchel is probably the most relevant addition for Affliction and Destro Warlocks. With the removal of the infamous Corruption Slow Legendary, this might be a new offensive alternative with Soul Rock granting 50% crit and haste per affected target. On paper, this seems insane, as Warlocks will essentially be getting a 50% haste and crit buff for 8 seconds every minute. Get ready for some BFA flashbacks with Destro Warlocks casting near instant chaos bolts in Arena. Some people are also focused on a new Mind Games Legendary for Venther Priests. The Shadow Word Manipulation LEGO will give Mind Games an additional charge, but at the expense of an increased cast time. It is hard to know if this trade-off will be worth it, but it could see some niche play in matchups with lots of off-healing. Finally, Venther Shamans got a new legendary option, which will allow them to apply Riptide or Flame Shock on targets hit by Chain Harvest. This likely won't outperform their legendary options at the moment, considering Doomwinds is such an integral part of their win condition. 
Speaking of PvP gearing, it seems like elite weapons might be removed in 9.1 as data miners discovered that upgrade levels only go up to 5. Once again, this is a band-aid fix to a much larger problem. With so many tiers of gear and gear upgrades being gated behind rating and honor, PvP gearing is in need of a major rework entirely. This sentiment is not new, and many players feel exhausted at how difficult it is to progress multiple characters, especially later on into a season where you get matched against fully geared and upgraded opponents. Hopefully, 9.1 delivers a way to make the gear differences into a much smaller problem because trust us, we see all of your comments about being undergeared and we know exactly how it feels. And finally, it appears a new PvP trinket has been added to the game. Unchained Gladiator Shackles will allow you to stun targets for 4 seconds. Fortunately or unfortunately though, it has a 3 minute cooldown, and with games generally lasting under 3 minutes, this probably won't get that much value in Arena. On top of that, you're giving up tons of stats in order to get a stun effect, which most classes in the game already have. So I wouldn't freak out so quick, as Battlemaster's trinkets will still probably be best in slot next season. And if you didn't see the changes you wanted with this update, be sure to stick around for weekly PTR updates leading up to the 9.1 launch. In a Tuesday interview with Sloot, lead designer Morgan Day revealed some of Blizzard's design philosophy, which tends to focus on buffing underperforming specs at the beginning of an expansion. Listen to what he has to say here. We are looking to you know, buff underperformers um, pretty consistently throughout the course of a raid tier or a season. Um, that's not something we've done as much in the past. Uh, we try to be very careful with um, nerfs uh, outside of that, you know, first couple of weeks, um, and we really just look to kind of buff underperformers. So if your class is underperforming right now, hope may be on the horizon. And as always, thanks for riding Mr. Ion's wild ride of class balance. And that's our PvP news roundup for this week. Once again, both PTR and Classic TBC are constantly getting updated. It can be overwhelming, but we are here to help and let you know exactly what you should expect from the next patch. The game is constantly evolving, so be sure to look out for more PvP news in next week's roundup when we get another PTR update. And be sure to stick around for more TBC content, as we will be updating you on all developments in the Burning Crusade meta. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. We will be keeping you up to date on any other major patch developments, so you don't want to miss out. For now, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.